Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the podcast. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're trying to grow our channel and as we continue on with the podcast, we want to start new forms of content. We want to start posting our work here on YouTube. So if you want to see some of that and continue supporting the podcast, please subscribe. Enjoy the episode. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Exordia Creative Podcast. Guess what guys? We're on Apple Podcasts now, which is Finally. very exciting. Um, so what do you think of, it was? A lot of people have asked me about the process mm-hmm. and honestly, I don't know what it is. It just took a long ass time. Yeah. That's all I got for you. Um, I, I filed a few times to get verified on it or whatever. And then I got this beautiful, beautiful email from anchor saying, Hey, you're on Apple podcast now. So if you guys listen to podcasts mm-hmm. on there, which I'm assuming a large portion of the Apple audience, which is the majority of the people that listen to this. Yeah. Um, you can listen to it on Apple podcast. Do you use Apple podcast? Yes, I do. Yeah. Is it like your main? It's my main podcast app. Okay. Yeah. What I, do you use? I watch, I watch them on YouTube. For okay. The most part. Yeah, but you have YouTube Premium, so if you're out on a walk or whatever, you can just close the thing and it still keeps playing. Right? Yeah, that's true. Whereas I don't have that luxury. So, the another a few nights ago, I was going for a run and I had a podcast on YouTube, and I don't know why I didn't just put it on an Apple Podcast, mm-hmm. but I didn't. So I had to keep it on in my pocket while I was running. Impossible. Very Impossible. hard. But I did it. But yeah, <laughs> I did finally, do it. <laughs> we're finally on. Yes. And you know. This kind of makes me think because another thing that we were applying for, probably every few months, we try to get verified on Instagram. Yeah, very hard to do that. It, it is. And we haven't been lucky yet, but I wonder if this is going to be like a chain reaction. Maybe. Where this just kind of validates our brand. Yeah. One more step and then Instagram. and then. Yeah. The more digital real estate that we build and get verified on, the better. So. Yeah. Somebody please write an article about Exordia. That would be fantastic. Chatham Daily News, Post Media, whoever's out there doing it. If you guys want to, well, we can collaborate on something. We'll figure yeah. something out. Let's we have only a have conversation one, about that. We after. only have one news article on, about our business mm-hmm. right now. So it is what it is. But yeah, so that was really exciting. I was really happy to get that email. We're mm-hmm. on there now. So please subscribe. And honestly, one thing, maybe we should talk about this as well afterwards. Yeah. Um, I want to get some reviews on the Apple podcast. So we rank up because mm-hmm. we're That'd in the business category on Google. So it'd be really cool to get reviews. Number one on Google, on our podcast, whatever it is. Um, and maybe we can do some kind of giveaway. I don't know. I had the idea of like teaming up with a bunch of our clients and doing some massive, ridiculous giveaway. That'd be pretty cool. Anyway, are we allowed to do that to incentivize reviews? Ooh, great question. I don't think so. Yeah. We've had that conversation with a couple of clients. Uh, but everybody does it. Yeah, a lot of people do it. We'll, oh, we'll think tough. of something. We'll think of something. If you want to leave us a review, leave us a review. Yeah, out of the kindness of your heart, if you want to do that, we will uh, we'll shout you out on the podcast. I don't know if that's legal, but we, we'll give you a big thank you. and We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out somehow. We'll make so, it worth your while. Anyway, shout out to Apple. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Apple likes to, be, like, to pick and choose who they let on there. They do. They're very exclusive, not only with their products, but with their services and all that. They're very like, oh, I don't know about you. Who can be a developer. Yeah. What yeah. kind of developer do? Yeah. And since we're talking about that, mm-hmm. you just told me that the Fortnite versus Apple. Yes. Apple won. Yes. So. The, yeah. They won one part of the, the verdict. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about this a few times over the past month or so. Apple versus Fortnite. Fortnite tries to circumvent the fee that Apple charges them uh, for processing payments. So if you want to buy something on Fortnite, you want to buy a costume or a weapon or something. Apple asks for 30% of the cut. Fortnite went behind Apple's back, tried to circumvent that, tried to take 100% of the profit instead of just the 70% that Apple wanted them to take. Um, There was this marketing campaign Fortnite put together um, saying Apple's being like a totalitarian dictator about it. Apple does own the App Store, so are they allowed to do that? This is this uh, question that's being settled um, in court right now. But basically... Uh, the court decided two things. First of all, that Apple is allowed to ban Fortnite. They removed Fortnite uh, from the App Store, which is huge because there's millions of users who play on their iPhones or iPads or whatever yeah. else. So it really did hurt Fortnite. Fortnite demanded that they uh, were allowed to stay. But at the end of the day, the court found that they were breaking Apple's rules. Fortnite were breaking Apple's rules, which they voluntarily agreed to when they put their app on the thing. So... It's a bit, it's a bit of a, a loss for Fortnite on that end, but the court also ruled that Apple isn't allowed to suspend the developer account. Oh, okay. Uh, Epic Games, 
they own this engine, which is like a platform where video games can be created called Unreal Engine. So a lot of popular video games like PUBG and, and whatnot, they all use this engine. So Apple was, was kind of dangling that over their head and threatening uh, to cancel the developer account, which would hurt a ton of games. But the court said, no, you can, you can ban Fortnite if you want, but you're not allowed to remove the Unreal Engine because the bystanders, AKA the players, shouldn't be harmed by this argument. Yeah. Wow. Right. Even so though is a lot this of going the, to be a precedent case then? Um, like where, where else has this kind of existed? I'm not super familiar with that. Well, you know, there's another popular platform for uh, Mac and PC called Steam, yeah. which is like an intermediary between the player and the game. So I can download Steam and from Steam, I can, I can buy and download and play a bunch of games. And Steam charges a fee too. I don't know at the moment if Fortnite is circumventing that mm -hmm. or not. I think the reason that Fortnite, you know, strategically chose to go after Apple is because there are a lot of developers who feel that Apple's unfair in the way that uh, they take the 30% cut. Yeah. So maybe they were hoping to kind of rally up with Spotify and with Google and all these other brands, you know. So um, I don't think things are going to proceed until next summer. Oh, wow. That's just how the legal system works. But in the meantime, Apple is allowed to remove Fortnite. So you're not getting Fortnite back hmm. anytime soon. Yeah. Unreal Engine, though, um, you're allowed to keep it. Yeah. I played when, when Fortnite was kind of at its peak. I was still in university. Mm -hmm. I played a little bit on my phone, but it was, number one, you always got chirped if you were playing on your phone. I couldn't. Yeah. Number two, I played on my Mac a little bit. Um, so you could probably still play on your Mac because I don't think you can download it in the App Store. Well, I think you Mac. get it from Steam if you play it yeah. on your Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's different. I haven't played Fortnite in a Fortnite. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's not really on my radar right now. Fair enough. Do you still play it? No. No. Not in months. No. I uh, dabbled in it for a bit. Yeah. But yeah. What about your Xbox? You got an Xbox like a month ago or so? <clears throat> so we, uh, what my, do you play? my brother and I, we swapped. I have a Theragun and right. he works outside and he works with his body a lot. So he's a sore a lot. Yeah. Um, and I was like, well, why don't we do a little tradesy poo? So we trade, we've traded, we've gone back and forth a couple times, like giving it back. Mm -hmm. One of us needed one or the other thing. Nice. Um, I am terrible at, uh, at Call of Duty. Yeah. I am terrible at it. Uh, I feel bad for my friends when I play with them. <laughs> I'm bad. Yeah. I'm bad. You're like, in their backpack. Yeah, basically. Okay. I, and I told, I tell them every single time I'm like, I'm not investing a lot of time into this game. Like, I'm not going to look up how to get better at it. I'm not going to look into like. I literally go on, follow them around, just hang out. try to shoot. Yeah. 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 But it's fun. Might catch on. It's fun. Yeah, I know. It's a really popular game right now. Mm -hmm. So that's Not as fun. popular as Fortnite, but who no? knows the longevity of it. Yeah. Because I feel like games these days are lasting a lot longer. They are. You know? Yeah. Like Grand Theft Auto V, for example. Yeah. That came out, what, eight years ago? Seven Ooh, years ago? Great. Er early high school for us. They're still releasing, like... Uh, downloadable content and mm -hmm. everything for it. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Speaking about YouTube Premium and about Apple's little cut, if you were to subscribe to YouTube Premium, I recommend you don't do it from your phone because Apple will charge you more. Really? Right, so because they take the cut, right? And uh, Google says not out of my pocket. Oh. So if you were to subscribe on your phone, it would be like maybe fifteen dollars instead of ten dollars. Wow. Okay. Good to yeah. know. Yeah, I wouldn't be. Uh I feel like YouTube Premium might be worth it. I don't know. I, I like I just watch so much YouTube. It's not even a question. Yeah, it's definitely my number one for like media consumption is is YouTube. Starting to replace my uh, Apple Music too. Mm. Yeah, well, there's so much. There's mm -hmm. music on there. Yeah. You know, those are my go tos. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. There's a new HomePod, which I'm excited about. Yes, that was exciting too. We were talking about that over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Apple's competitor to Amazon Alexa, Google Home. Um, it was originally the HomePod came out a couple of years ago, I think $500. You can get an Alexa for $30, not a very compelling, uh, yeah. substitute product. Their claim to fame was the speaker though. It's right. supposed to be like an amazing, amazing sound system. Yeah. I'm, sh I'm sure it's very good. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just so, it's just not even a fair comparison when you're comparing like $30 product versus a yeah. $500 product, you yeah. know? Yeah. There's a HomePod mini now. I think it's $130. $130. And I'm pretty excited to get it because Apple Music is my primary music app. Mm -hmm. um, that and YouTube. So I think that it'll be cool to have something in the home that... So you're going to get one? You can probably. 
I'm gonna check it out that you yeah. can easily uh, use Siri with. Yeah. I love my Alexa. I use it every single day. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really annoying to play music unless you sign up for for sure Amazon Music. And for sure. I'm trying to consolidate my subscriptions. Yeah. I'm wondering. Would you get one? A HomePod. Yeah. Or a Mini. I would get the HomePod Mini if I were to get. I can't justify spending 500 bucks on a speaker that I can't take. That's prices. what I'm thinking too. Whereas like my Bose that I have, I can justify like 400 bucks. It's the best speaker that I've ever owned. Right. And it's a Bluetooth and it's super portable. So in that scenario, this one you have to plug into a wall. So I wonder if they're going to keep that the same. Like, is it going to be like our, our Google our Google Home? Probably. Yeah. So I don't know. That's still yeah. 400, 500 bucks. But the mini is intriguing. Well, I like the smaller one because it's more modular. So maybe if you're going to spend $500 on a big one, you could buy yeah. three of them yeah. and have them all synchronized all throughout your house. Yeah. You know, one in your room, one in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. To I me, that'd be really cool having a, your whole home. Yeah, I could see it being useful at work too, like using it for like productivity and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Siri knows? is not the best uh, virtual it's assistant. It's not, but it's like an update away from being good. Yeah, so. maybe if they can start collecting way more data mm -hmm. by using it like this, mm -hmm. they can kind of increase their competitiveness. Yeah. Because Alexa is really smart. Yeah. Google's fantastic. Yeah. Siri... Yeah, it's kind of embarrassing almost. It is. It is. Yeah. But were they one of the first? I think they were. Um, they bought Siri when it was a baby. Probably one of the first mass marketed mm -hmm. virtual assistants, but definitely not the first. Mm -hmm. hmm. Huh. The first in millions of people's pockets, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just looking down at our uh, at our notes here. Mm -hmm. Continue on with tech. Yeah. Well, speaking about... Um, Last week, we talked about the Apple announcement. So they announced, you know, the new uh, iPhones, the HomePod, a bunch of new stuff. Um, and their 5G, the yeah. 5G phones, yeah. which is, is interesting. And to go back to what we were saying about Fortnite, um, that's a pretty big move because Fortnite is among the top three to five most popular games in the world at the moment. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, it probably wasn't an easy decision for Apple to cut Fortnite because yes, Fortnite was going against their rules and circumventing how they were able to take their profit. But it also hurts Apple as a, as a company that now isn't able to offer this game that a lot of people love. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it does hurt. Them. So it's this question of like, do you cut off your nose to spite your face? Mm -hmm. Right. And they, they ended up choosing to, because you can't, um, you can't set a rule that you're not going to enforce and expect, uh, your value not to get trampled on by all the other developers who yeah. also want to save money. Yeah. So it's tough. And what's interesting is they made the 5G announcement last week. And for people who don't know, 5G is just the next generation of cellular tech for speed. Um, 3G, 4G, LTE. Right. Yeah. For download speed, processing speed, upload, etc. So the idea behind 5G is that let me let me start by saying this LTE in Canada unless you're in a super rural area is already fantastic like you can load a video um, in seconds mm -hmm. you can download a song in, in seconds this is mostly for interactive real-time stuff like video games live sports the idea would be that you could play like some massive multiplayer online game in the middle of a forest yeah. with little to no latency which is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, like I think we aren't even thinking about the possible applications of 5G yet. Are we close to the infrastructure though in Canada? Are we close to being yes. able to? Oh, we are. Yeah, we already okay. have it. Um, okay. uh, like for example, in, Ch in Chatham, I think we have it on main roads. Mm. Like your LaCroix Street, your St. Clair, those streets have it. Whereas if you're in some kind of like suburban neighborhood, you're probably not gonna get it Yeah. for now. Yeah. Um, I know in Mississauga, which is has really great infrastructure, um, they have it on just about every street. Okay. Alrighty. So we're getting there. I think Bell, Telus, and Rogers are gonna um, get exclusive uh, rights to offer it, and then it's gonna trickle down into the kind of child company phone plans like Kudo and Fido and stuff. Does later. Fido still exist? Yeah, I think Fido still exists. Okay. So the three flagship carriers are gonna get it first, and then yeah. the subsidiaries are gonna get it after. But anyway, um, one of the most practical applications is gaming, multiplayer gaming off of Wi-Fi. And 
Apple is partnering with the most popular video game in the world, League of Legends, mm. to offer League of Legends on iPhone for the first time ever. So what an absolute power move to follow yeah. uh, the court ruling that Apple isn't uh, required to put Fortnite back on the App Store. Not only are they uh, revoking access to Fortnite to millions of iPhone users, but now they're partnering with League of Legends and creating this huge campaign about having the first 5G iPhone video game, which has an enormous following. Could have been Fortnite. If there are any games that could give Fortnite a run for their money, yeah, it's like League. And that could have been Fortnite. Minecraft. Yeah, these are absolute like top echelon games. Yeah. Insane. Mm -hmm. Wow. Huh. Crazy. Tim Cook is wild. Tim Cook is wild. Tim Apple, as they call him. Tim Apple. I was I did a little more research into the phones too, since we're talking mm -hmm. about this. I really like them. I like them. Yeah. I like the older design. So last week you were saying your battery's starting to go. It is. And right. I like the older design, but they brought it into now. Like I like I was a fan of the square edges and stuff and keeping like the straight yeah, lines I love and all that. that. Um so it was really cool to see that. I love that. Um yeah, I love I'm a um, fan. I, I know I absolutely love that era of Apple product mm -hmm. design um, before before he left the company Johnny Ive I think was the best designer Apple's ever had mm -hmm. um, he's do you know the brand Braun no Apple oh, is very yes. inspired by vintage the toothbrush by vintage, vintage Braun products yeah not not current era Braun but like 70s and 80s uh, okay. Braun okay that's and, just what I think of when I think of Braun I think right of for sure um, but we, we should I should show you after the podcast um, Vintage Braun products like calculators and mm. and kettles and stuff. It's a German design house, and they're revolutionary at the time. And they really heavily inspired like Steve Jobs and old Apple design. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to see them coming back to this kind of design language. Yeah, because in my opinion, the iPhone four was probably the best phone ever designed. So cool. Purely in terms of industrial design. Yeah, it was very cool looking. Obviously, the phones today outpace it by miles. Yeah. But that was my favorite phone by far. Yeah. That was that a was beautiful a really cool piece one. of design. That was a really cool one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I'm excited to see. I wanna. I wanna see the product. I wanna see the iPhone in person first. But definitely, definitely tempting. Yeah. There's a blue one this year. Yeah, there is. Kind of cool. There is. So we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Dude, so last week you were talking about how Amazon was, they just got approved for some drone stuff, yes. drone delivery. Well, now Amazon's competitor, Walmart, which I have, to, I want to talk to you about this on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Walmart has now just got approved to try some drone stuff as well for right. the last mile delivery or whatever. Yes. So very interesting. My question the is. floodgates have opened. The FAA is like, you get one, you get one, dude, you get one. I think that Walmart is like actual very serious competition for Amazon for a specific reason. The amount of real estate that they have and the 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 um, location to the store to everybody's house in the US and Canada is insane. Yeah. I think it's like 90% of Americans are within 10 minutes of a Walmart. You're right. So imagine if they just turned them into distribution centers and the drones just came and used that for that. Like imagine that, dude. They have the infrastructure. Yeah. And I think Walmart leases though. They do but lease. still. But still. Yeah. That could be that could ooh, but I'd be curious to know if Amazon leases or, or owns their I'm not space. sure. I'm not sure. Yes. But they don't have nearly the amount of distribution that, that Walmart could could potentially have for this exact thing. No, but they sure are um, setting up <laughs> new new stations like they, they definitely are like they could. They definitely are. Yeah. That's interesting. And we see Amazon's big advantage is they have the tech edge. Yeah. Walmart's um, a little fat and slow when it comes to that. Yeah, I do applaud Walmart. Um, Walmart's recent improvements to their e-com platforms. Yeah, they're getting better, but um, for better and, or worse, Walmart is just so rooted and established in the American vernacular as a retail store that you drive to, which is great for brand recognition. Yeah, but it's also hard to position Walmart as this brand that you can order online and mm -hmm. expect fast free shipping. Yeah. Whereas so. Amazon out the gate was, was an e-com store. Now they have the Amazon grab and go stuff. Exactly. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And we see, um, we see Walmart like desperately trying to find a tech partner. Mm -hmm. So we've talked before about the potential TikTok ban in the U S and how TikTok has to find an American company to buy the American operations of the business. Yeah. If they want to be able to operate in North America and initially, um, Walmart wanted to partner with Microsoft who was trying to buy TikTok, 
TikTok declined Microsoft's offer, and uh, then Oracle submitted an offer. And now all of a sudden, uh, Walmart jumps from Microsoft to Oracle, and now they want to partner with Oracle. So I think Walmart just wants to be um, associated in some way with one of these tech companies yeah. to get some of their management on board, to get some of their technology and infrastructure on board, yeah. to help them compete against Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's going to yeah. be really interesting to see. Very interesting to watch those two. The the pace at which they can catch up. Yeah. Because I remember they struggled for so long to get their e-com up and going and doing it properly and all that. So anyway, applaud to them for getting their, their drone stuff out. The yeah. That's cool. Now it's very nice. You can see in real time uh, which stores have which products and the yes. stock availability. Yeah. That's nice. Which is really cool. Yeah. And they have, um, I don't know the multiple, but they have way more um, online inventory than they do in stores. Mm-hmm. So mm -hmm. there are products and brands that the retail stores don't carry Yeah, um, that you can all get online, Yeah, which is really cool. Yeah. They have some Pokemon card packs that I, uh, that I looked at online that you can only buy online. Really? Yeah. Some ancient origin stuff. Okay, cool. But I don't know what that means, but they're just like newer generation Pokemon cards, but they're still like the value is still there and you can buy right, them some on new stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. But you can, you can buy them on the Walmart online store, but you can't get them in store anywhere. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they do that. Um, man, what else is going on? Uh, we should talk about this locally, uh, the gift. So, um, well, here's the thing. Is it, it's in November. It's in November. Right. So first of all, going back a few months, um, you guys have probably heard about the May 16th miracle, Yeah. which was this locally organized concerted effort where on May 16th, um, in the morning or in the afternoon, Everybody has canned goods and non-perishables and donation stuff on their doorstep. And there was this coordinated effort to pick everything up and uh, create like one of the biggest donation days ever. So a lot of people volunteered um, all throughout the municipality, every city in town to go pick up things on everybody's doorstep. They sweeped the entire town and it was all at distribution centers in a matter of uh, like a few hours. Yeah. It was, an, it was an insane effort. I'm just mm -hmm. looking up the exact date of when this is happening because I really don't want to fudge that. Right. So it was, a, it was a fantastic success, and it inspired other miracles in other cities um, around the province and even around the country. So this is kind of the follow-up to it. Yes. Yes. So so the May 16th, everybody at noon had to put up a perishable food item right. on or non-perishable yep. on their front step. Volunteers would come pick it up. We're doing the same thing this year, yes. except it's going to be uh, Christmas oriented. So we're going to be um, asking for gifts. Mm -hmm. Now I was on a Zoom call the other week with the organizers and stuff, and they don't want to do used gifts, new, and then they said maybe slightly used, but just stick with buying new gifts for sure. as well as perishable food items. This is happening on November 21st at noon. So we're very excited to be a part of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think um, this is something that everybody can get behind. This year has been particularly hard. Yeah, for a lot of people. You know, putting gifts under the tree is a challenge um, for a lot of families anytime. And this year, you know, certainly hasn't made it easier. They were estimating that 30,000 people will need help this Christmas in yeah. Chatham, Ken alone. Yeah. So our population is 105. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, so hopefully we can do something here at the same magnitude of... Uh, mm -hmm. the May 16th miracle because that was really awesome yeah and then ideally it creates this exponential effect where other cities and municipalities see that something like this can be pulled off yeah you know with the right group of volunteers within a matter of like five weeks yeah and maybe it catches on and it becomes an annual thing exactly exactly mm -hmm. so be on the lookout for that follow them on uh, social media and stuff um, super happy to be a part of that and uh, for sure yeah what else is going on locally we got the Dutch market. Yes. Which is very exciting. If you want to tell the story, I'll get my little tchotchke out. That's a cool story. So about three and a half years ago, when Quentin and I started our business, we approached the Dutch market. Uh, they had just recently moved into their new location on Wellington, I think it's called. Yep. And um, we approached them uh, to help them out with some product photography, social media management, ads, et cetera. Um, we went back and forth for a while, uh, but ultimately the business, uh, they had somebody internally doing their marketing. They weren't ready to, to work together. Um, so we kind of parted ways and 
uh, we got caught up with other customers and other stuff going on in our own business. And we maintained a relationship with um, Charlie and with the management there, but nothing ever solidified. Anyway, fast forward like almost three and a half years later, we finally got them as a client. So we're happy to say that as of last week, we're officially working with them. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah, and we've touched on this before on the podcast, just this concept of, uh, you know, maintaining relationships and establishing all these different touch points because it's not the first time that we've had somebody who we approached in 2017 approach us Mm -hmm. two, three, even more years later. Yeah. And it happens quite frequently. Yeah. And it's, you know, needless to say, it's really gratifying for us as a business to see that, you know, we've been able to grow in a way that we're able to work with. Never, never assume it's a no forever Mm -hmm. because you never know what can happen. Anyway, after the meeting, when we set up the ad manager account and all that stuff, um, I bought Jared and I some of these uh, little Dutch clogs, these little Dutch clogs, traditional cool. Dutch shoe. Yeah. So it's our little piece. And I think Jared wants to get toys now from all of our clients. Yeah. It'd be cool. Deal toys. Yeah. See if we can get a forklift from Titan to park in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got to get something from them, huh? Yeah. Maybe a little mini one. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important to have a little symbol of yeah business success. Yeah. So that's exciting. Shout out to the Dutch market. Um, very excited to be working with them. We start in November. Cool. 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 For sure. Yeah. Um, man. So I guess, w- yeah, we'll touch on this. Sure. So, so as you guys know, I like to do challenges. Yes. At least I like to talk about trying to do them. 75 hard. I failed. Um, 5k every other day has been going very, very well. Um, but my wife wanted to start this nutrition thing, this nutrition plan. So we've been doing it for the last three, four days, strictly on it. It's been absolutely fantastic. One of the things that you have to do every day is drink at least four liters of water. So I've got this little number to help me keep track. Mm-hmm. Um, and man, I feel amazing. Like eating absolutely nothing but clean. Like no, it's very little carb. Right. Last night I had um, chicken wraps with romaine. Mm-hmm. Lettuce is the wrap. Um, today for a snack, I had tuna and avocado with vegan mayonnaise. Like. Cool. It's, it's just, I feel so good. Right, you told me no dairy, right? Yeah, there's one of no the dairy. stipulations. There's no dairy. I feel so good, dude. Mm-hmm. And so Sarah and I have our little, um, our little staycation that we're doing this weekend. And once a week you get a, uh, what is it? A treat meal is what they call it okay. in the program. So I'm, I'm interested to see how my body reacts. Yeah. I'm probably not going to go too crazy that night, but I'm going to be veering off of what we've been doing. Gotcha. So I'm excited to see what that does. It's absolutely essential you do that. What? Give yourself a treat? It, w- whether it's a treat or whether it's just showing yourself some compassion or yeah. being reasonable about it. Yeah. Because if you try to adhere to something, you know, that's dramatically different from what you do, um, I, I think it's easier to fall into like a binge purge kind of yeah. kind of cycle. Yeah. Whereas if you give yourself what you want in a smaller quantity, yeah. you know, as opposed to just letting this frustration pent up until you can't do anything about it. Yeah. I think that's a more sustainable way to go about it. Yeah. Anyway, it's, been a, it's a 30 day program. I've been feeling absolutely fantastic. And I think a lot of it has to do with the amount of water that I've been drinking. Yeah. And now Jared and I, we, we drink a lot of water, mm-hmm. but some days, you know, like you're not keeping track. Whereas now I know that this is one liter. I need at least four of these a day, you know? So now it's easy to keep track of. I think the other thing too, and I used to think that intermittent fasting was like the way for me, but I don't think that that's the case anymore. I've been having, so it goes breakfast, snack lunch snack right dinner done and my energy levels have been at the exact same all day no no lagging down true so like i don't know maybe that maybe intermittent fasting isn't the actual way for me to go yeah you know so, diet is such a personal it thing it is it is anyway so you i'm know. just i'm learning so much that's fantastic yeah. so it's always cool to learn more about yourself and what you need yeah and, and it's nice to have sarah do it too definitely it's nice to have her doing it I'm, I'm, I started out just doing it to support her cause she mm-hmm. wanted to do it, but right. I'm in, it's fun. Yeah. If you guys are cooking together, living together, yeah. it helps so much to have that yeah. kind of support structure. We did have to cancel our HelloFresh though. Unfortunately mm-hmm. we got it the, we got it for one week, but now we right. don't need it right now. So we're canceling that, but HelloFresh was great too. Why is that? They don't, it cater doesn't, to the it doesn't diet? work to the, to what, for what we're doing. It's very specific. Like the plan gives you a grocery list and daily menu. Oh, wow. Right. So like we go out and get the exact groceries. So there's no like lenience. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It's, you know, people have such 
dramatically different ideas about food and mm-hmm. their relationship with nutrition and what they eat. Yeah. It's really fascinating. And like, yeah. it's mostly mental, you yeah. know, it's really cultural, depends how you were raised. Um, and yeah, I just think that's really cool that it's like this essential thing. Everybody has to eat. We all have that in common, but people have like wildly different attitudes about what it means to be healthy. Yeah. How we sustain ourselves. It's really cool. Yeah. So anyway, guys drink water, drink water. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, yeah, dude, I think that's it for today. I mean, we can talk about the U S senators call for increased regulation about social media. Talk about that little number. Sure. What's up? So last week, um, who's the one dude that everybody talks about? He's a U.S. senator. I think he's in Florida. He's had a run in with Trump a few times. What is his name? Anyway, don't know his name. He was sounding off. He was very upset because the New York Post put out an article talking about um, Hunter Biden's, which is Joe Biden's son's alleged Mm -hmm. business dealings over in Ukraine, Russia, whatever it is. Right. They put out this post. Facebook originally flagged it, but you could still share it. They flagged it as uh, potential fake news, whereas Twitter, they blocked the links. You could not make any post about it. They wouldn't let it go out. Right. You just told me that they've changed that now. They'll let it go out. So anyway, people are up in arms. They're saying, okay, th- here it is. They're, they are trying to control the election. Here it is right in your face. So... I don't know, man. Yeah. I never got into the inner workings of, of what happened here, but um, Twitter ha- has had a bit of a history of censoring certain accounts, certain viewpoints, certain ideologies. They're traditionally seen as very left-leaning, mm-hmm. um, and they're known to take a more punitive stance on some of the Republican content and some of the Republican voices. Um, people joke that it's a it's a miracle that Trump hasn't been uh, removed from Twitter. Yeah. Um, so this isn't the first time that Twitter's been accused of uh, doing something like this. Th- you know, whether there's merit to the accusations or whatever, I really have no idea. No, me either. Um, but Twitter has backpedaled, uh, and the founder Jack Dorsey has issued some semblance of an apology, saying that they shouldn't have blocked this certain article from being shared and you're now allowed to share it yeah is this not very similar to the apple app store and Fortnite situation right i feel like it's almost the exact same thing yeah not the exact same thing i shouldn't say that but it is very similar well it's just it's because what are tech companies now you know nobody knows they've they've expanded from one sector of the economy and started to trickle into everything, right? Like we talked a a month ago about the antitrust, uh, about the antitrust laws and the investigation that's being conducted by the U S government into Google, Amazon, Apple, and one other as well. Do you know the other one? Facebook. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, it's, I think it's a really important discussion to be had. I'm not sure what the correct answer is. I'm not sure if it's a one size fits all. Me either. But you know, the original, um, the original antitrust laws, which were created in the United States around the 1920s or 30s, were to um, stop this railway empire from getting too big, because in in America at that time, the railway was the most like vital infrastructure of the economy. If you controlled the railway, if you controlled um, where products went and who could have access to what, then you basically owned the lifeblood of the infrastructure of the economy. Whereas now I'd argue that the railways are now the tech companies Mm -hmm. because it's this fundamental place where information is shared, commerce and transactions happen, you know, there, uh, there's, there's no sector of the economy that's exempt from the power that these tech companies have anymore. Yeah, and so that, that begs the question. Everybody that says that they don't want to change all these laws and stuff, but we, you literally you have to change them in order to adapt with the times. And I think that's, that's the same in Canada. That's the same in the U.S. We have to stay up to date, and I think that's, that's what has to be done. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe not make it so friggin' specific. Like not just tech companies, but like let's future-proof this somehow. I don't know. Make it 
more easy to change. And I know that it's very difficult to do that. Um, but I think, yeah, some, some regulations, some new laws have to come into effect. They have to change old ones. Um, but yeah, if you guys are still listening uh, this far in, let us know what, what you guys think about the whole regulation of, of social media because it's coming up more and more now. So what are your guys' thoughts? Yeah, definitely. It'll be interesting to talk about. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Should we wrap it up? Yeah. Yeah. All right. If you're still listening, thank you very much. Yes. And we'll see you next week. Oh, and subscribe on YouTube and maybe Apple Podcasts. Yeah. I'm down for Let's it. Let's go. Uh-huh. Peace.